Hey everyone, welcome to the Living Environment Regents Exam Review Episode 2, Point in the Right Direction. In this episode, we'll be talking pretty much about points and how to get points and what are points on the Regents. So let's start. The first thing is, what does your score mean on the Regents? So as we said in the last episode, it's 85 possible points that are on the exam. But what's weird is, we as teachers, when we grade it, after we grade it, we use what's called a conversion chart. And the conversion chart is used to determine your grade. Now what's strange about the Regents is, a 65 on the Regents does not really mean a 65%. It all has to do with this conversion chart, which I'll discuss in this episode. But what is a 65? Well, believe it or not, a 65 on the Regents is like a 47. 47? 47% of the exam is really a 65. Let me explain. This is a conversion chart. If you notice, the white sections on the conversion chart say raw score. This is your number of points that you get out of 85. The shaded areas are the scaled score. That's the score New York State um, determines and decides what your region score is. So if you get an 85 out of 85, obviously that's 100. But the other scores are strange, so let's talk about them. Regents scoring secret. Zoom. This is a weird little secret. The worse you do, the more generous the scoring on the Regents. Interesting. I don't think they want you to know that. Here's what I mean. Let's look at a score of a 31. Wow, 31. That means you got 31 out of 85 possible points. Now, if you got 31 out of 85, that's 36% of the test. That means you got a 36. But what's weird is the Regents conversion scale gives you plus 19. It gives you 55. So getting a 36 is really like getting a 55 on the Regents. So this is how the conversion scale works. Let me show you another one. A 40, like I mentioned, is 47%. That means you got 47% of the test right, but when you boost it up 18 points, it becomes a 65. That's kind of weird. That means, well, it's kind of cool, actually, for people who are bad test takers, that you really just have to get around half of the test right to actually get a 65. So this is how the conversion scale works. Let me show you some more examples. So what is if, if you get a 55 on the regions? Sorry, not a 55. If you get a 55 raw score, that's like getting 64.7. So that's kind of like what you're used to passing is a 65. That actually gets boosted up plus 12 to a 77. Now, if you notice, the blue numbers have been going down. The first one was plus 19 and then plus 18. Now it's plus 12. The better you do, the less the boosted up it is. Or, like I mentioned before, the region's secret, the worse you do, the more generous the scoring. This gets more apparent as we move up. Now let me show you some good grades. For example, getting a raw score in the 70s. If you get, for example, a 72 out of 85, that's 84%. But look how much they boost you now. Only five points to an 89. So you might think you did great in 89, which is really great, um, but you weren't boosted as much as someone who got a 47. And it gets worse, watch. Someone with a 77, that's 90.5% of the test right. 77 out of 85, 90%. They only got one and a half points scored up, boosted up to a 92. Even a sillier example, there's only this one is the only real score on this uh, conversion scale, an 81. 81 out of 85 possible points equals 95%. You get no boost, and so your raw score, which is 81, becomes 95. So this is the only score that's actually real. There's even one where you get deducted. If you got 84 points, it was actually 98.8%, and they took 0.8 away. Crazy. So you see how the scale works? You get a raw score and you get a scaled score. Raw score is how many points you got out of 85. Scaled score is what the region says your grade is. So the worse you do, the more bonus you get.
Okay, let's talk about points. Now, on the Regents, you'll see these numbers in brackets. This is pretty important because after each question, there's a number in brackets. That's how many points you get for that question. Now, for most of the questions, you'll pretty much just see a 1. But every now and then, you'll see a 2, which means the Regents is looking for two things, two answers. Now, it's important to know that. For example, this question has a 1 after it. But sometimes we get two answers. Let me show you how it works. Let's say this question is on the Regents. It says, identify the cellular, pro cellular process that most likely produced the CO2 in the body cell. Now, what is that? What's the answer? Uh, yeah. Could be cellular respiration or photosynthesis. The answer is cellular respiration, because that's what our bodies do to make CO2. But if someone writes this, photosynthesis and cellular respiration, well, me as the grader, I can only grade the first thing the person wrote. So even though they wrote cellular respiration, which is right, this answer is wrong because they wrote it second. If someone writes cellular respiration first, that's what I'll grade. So just write one thing when it says one, okay? You'll only get credit for one thing. Now this question, it might be hard for you to see, but I'll read it out for you, has a two after it. State two environmental concerns that should be considered before the product is sold and used by the public. Now if there's a two, that means they're looking for two things. If you only know one thing, just write one thing down. If you know two things, you can use numbers. For example, you put one. Will the product harm the local water supply? Use and and the number two. Will the chemicals kill native species? Now you don't need numbers, but it just helps your grader find the two things that you wrote a lot easier. So that's a cool thing to do. Now, speaking of points, please people, get to the point. For example, this question says, state one reason that most foods must be digested before they can enter a cell. A lot of times people start writing, one reason that most foods must be digested before they can enter the cell is because... You don't need all that baloney, that intro sentence stuff. I know your English teacher will probably hate us for saying that, but you don't need that. You could get rid of that. You actually just get to the point. What's one reason that foods have to be digested? Just say it. Molecules may be too large to enter the cell membrane, or the molecules need to be broken down, or food needs to be broken down before it gets to the cell. Just get to the answer, okay? Now, be careful because some people abuse this special power. For example, this question says, many runners pour water on their bodies during a race. Explain how this action helps to maintain homeostasis. Sometimes they just write stuff like this, cooling temps. Now, I might know what you mean as a grader, but there's no way you're getting points for that. It's too short. It doesn't describe. It's not a sentence. Um, it, it's not descriptive at all. It's just too short. So don't abuse and think that it's short answer. You could just write anything and we'll know what you mean. You have to be clear. So make sure that you proofread your short answer questions. Last thing, hitting the bullets, people. This is the cool thing about the regions. Although this is in part C, which is where you're supposed to write a lot, we actually just give you points for everywhere there's a one. So if you notice, there's a bullet and then there's a one, okay? So you can actually just answer what the bullet says. So in this example, some people, this is a design and experiment question. Some people are like, I would get some pots and put some soil in and put them by the window and get some sun. You don't need all that. We don't grade any of that. The first thing we grade is the first bullet. State the hypothesis to be tested. And so, for example, you could just put a bullet and write, a change in soil pH will cause a change in flower color for this example. Then you go to the next bullet. State one way the group, the control group, will be treated differently than the experimental group. You put a bullet and just write what your answer is, and so on. Just answer the bullets for your points, okay? So that's our second episode, get in your points and get to the point. Now that you know how the Regents is scored, graded, and what we look for is uh, scores, hopefully you'll do better. See you later.